Hey, all you cool cats. Ready for a little fun? <laughs> That's what I thought. Pop talk. Scooby doo wah doo wah. Pop talk. The fun never stops, you know. Pop talk. If you're a nerd or a jock, run, don't just walk. You ready to rock? You got pop talk. Now from Funko Hollywood, it's time for pop talk. Hey everybody, it's your pal Funmaker Mike. Can you believe it? Another episode of Pop Talk. You know him from the Powderpuff Girls. Uh, that little thing called SpongeBob. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Funko fanatics of all ages, welcome Tom Kenny. Hey, oh my, listen to the audience, go sit down, please. They're going crazy. <sighs> well, it's called Pop Talk. While we talk, we want you to build a pop. Oh, I'm terrible at multitasking, by the way. I can only do one thing at a time, so uh, bear with me here. Yes, just build a pop while we talk? It can be you, it can be alter ego you, it can be whatever you want. I, I can just go random? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start with Guy Fieri's uh, hair, okay? Uh, this is a one-way ticket to Flavortown right here. <laughs> All right, so Tom. Yes? As you know, we're a collectibles company. <laughs> do you, Tom Kenny, collect anything? I do, I do, yes. My wife will tell you uh, uh, way too much. Uh, a minimalist married uh, collector. But uh, yeah, so I collect records. Records have always been my thing. 45s, LPs, 78s, but also rock and roll magazines and books and um, comic books too. You, you mean know? like Circus Magazine? And yeah, all that kind of stuff. And punk rock fanzines, you know, oh. Kicks Magazine and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, st I still love all that stuff. Arrested Development. Look, I, I'm already losing track of the mission. Is there gonna be a test? What about, uh, like, do you have a jukebox to play your 40? I got two jukeboxes, yeah, I yeah, do. I, I have, have two one. jukeboxes, yep, yep, uh, yeah, great, great, yeah. Yeah, a 54 and a, and a 55, and a, yeah, there's so much fun. Well, it says here. That, I have a question. Yeah. How, do, how does this go on? Oh, uh, here, let me see. Yeah. I think you have to have one. Are you one, familiar with Funko Pops? A little bit. Okay. See this yeah. thing here? So you have to find a thing. Oh, that's a beard. I thought it was Guy Fieri's hair. So it's supposed to fit. Never mind. Oh, okay. Great, great. It's, it's like the Gentle Giant album cover. I love it. Cool. We all know you from SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, some do. <laughs> <laughs> SpongeBob's famous. But your dream was to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah, well, actually my dream was to be a voiceover guy and stand-up comedian was sort of the route to that, ultimately. Uh, you know, I tried to break into voiceover and it was, man, it was tough to get my nose under that tent. And, but I also loved, always loved uh, sketch comedy and yeah, in high school I started doing that, just uh, open up for bands, going up in between bands. And um, the comedian Bobcat Goldthwait yep. is my childhood friend. We met when we were six. We just talked today, as a matter of fact, 54 years later. And uh, yeah, we kind of enabled each other in our, in our little town of East Syracuse, New York, you know, far from a showbiz mecca. We kind of encouraged each other. You can do it. Hey, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're, you know, we can do this. And we, we both managed to do uh, okay for ourselves. And, and uh, yeah, sometimes I, yeah, he was kind of my, my uh, Patrick, or maybe I was his SpongeBob. I don't know. But sometimes you need that friend, that special friend uh, to, to, that, that puts wind in your sails when you're kind of ready to, to give up, you know, much like SpongeBob and Patrick. And uh, that, that's what we were, Bobcat and I have always been to each other and still are, you know. Take us back to the original pitch of SpongeBob. Oh, sure. Did See, he's like... very secure in his masculinity. He's like, I'm gonna wear the pink skirt. Yeah. Um, the original pitch for SpongeBob uh, came from uh, the creator, Steve Hillenberg. Uh, he and I had worked together on a show called Rocco's Modern Life. Right. Uh, I was Heifer the Cow, that was a hoot. And there's a Funko Pop of Heifer too. Oh man, we gotta see it before it's destroyed. Uh, which I've signed a few hundred of those, so thank you. Uh, but uh, we went on that show, Steve was a creative director, I was the voice of that character, it was my first animated series. And then a couple of years after that, when Rocco ended, Steve just put together this pitch that he was thinking of showing to Nickelodeon, you know, and had me, uh, showed it to me and said, you know, I've got you in mind for the, for the lead guy. It's really the only part I've ever gotten without auditioning. Really? Yeah, because, you know, show business, especially when you're the, uh, a D-list celebrity or lower like me, it's, uh, you have to audition for everything. And that's, oh, it's down to you and 
four other guys. It's down to you and three other guys. It's down to you and a celebrity. Oh, the celebrity got it. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, that's kind of my life. But, uh, but with Steve, he's like, you're SpongeBob. I don't want to hear anybody else. Nickelodeon was saying, hey, maybe we should audition some other people, uh, you know, just so we have something to listen against, you know, that put SpongeBob's up against each other, taste test. And Steve said, nope, nope, not interested. I got it. Tom SpongeBob. And now I got to cast everybody else in the show. And everybody else had, uh, auditioned in the conventional way because because Steve didn't really know those people beforehand. And and he, you know, he just put together this perfect cast. You know, he was he was one of the smartest guys I ever met in my life, you know. And but to take you back to that, he took this big, you know, like a portfolio out of his desk drawer in his apartment down by the Beverly Center on Colgate. And uh just showed me he had, he had drawings of the characters and you know biographies little paragraphs about them some of the names were different some of the appearances were a little different but it, it was all there I mean it was it was like Tolkien you know what I mean it was, yeah it was, it was like Lord of the Rings he knew he knew what his world was going to be 110 percent and he never wavered from that and you know it's tough in this business you know you always have suits and you know, people giving you notes all the time, people that aren't really creative, but they think they are and, you know, getting in the way. I, and I know the feeling. Yeah, you know the feeling, yeah. <laughs> and you just kind of got to forge ahead without messing up, messing the bed. You know, you got to, you're, you're like, well, I, I, I want to hang on to what I have. I don't want to alienate the people that are enabling me to do it, but I'm, I know what I'm doing here. And Steve was, uh, was great about just holding the line when he, when, when he felt really strongly about it and you know he, he and he, he was right all the time so so i guess there's a lesson there i know about your band and i i it seems pretty cool it's fun yeah so yeah i've always like you I, I, uh, rock and roll background music background and um you know was played in bands as, as a teenager and, and then when i started doing stand-up and i got in my early 20s and started to make a living as a stand-up I, I didn't really have time to, to, to be a band guy anymore. And so just in the last handful of years, I, through SpongeBob, me and a friend of mine, Andy Paley, wrote some songs for, for the, the series, for the show. And uh, from that, we got to know these musicians that played on the sessions and that grew, you know, we started talking to them and we all liked a lot of the same stuff, like 60s soul and, you know, just soul music, rock and roll. And we started goofing around, getting together, doing stuff playing shows for kids charities that were Spongebob music. And then backstage, we'd be messing around on old soul songs, you know, uh, Sam Cooke and Five Royales, James Brown, all this, all this craziness. And then we just started doing that. And now, yeah, now we play, uh, we play all over LA and, and other places, you know, starting, just starting to, to, to branch out. It's, it's a 12 piece band, so it's not real portable. Yeah. But uh, if they were this, if they were this size, if my twelve musicians were this size, I could put them in my suitcase. But it's uh, yeah, so it's been um, yeah, it's been it's been a trip. Yeah, it's a really fun band. What is your favorite cartoon then? Back when you were oh, a kid, character wise? No, well, yeah, just growing up. Oh well, still uh, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man oh, that wow. blew my mind. You know that was what was on before you went to yeah. school at seven in the morning in the snow. And uh, you, you get you get some Popeye and some little rascals in you, yeah. You know, and then and then you go off to school. But uh, yeah, those, those Fleischer Popeyes, like those were so yeah weird. And even to me, growing up in the you know in the '60s or whatever, they seemed kind of old and mysterious yeah. and cool, like and not like Disney cartoons. You know, like there was something more urban and cool and East Coast yeah. about about. You know, they all took all the sets were like waterfronts and dives and stuff like that, and uh, it just seemed cooler than the the more barnyardy uh, settings of, of a lot of the Mickey cartoons and stuff. So, so uh, yeah, those blew my mind. And then you know, and those Betty Boop cartoons. And you... I'm so very lonely, sad. Like the oh, sea yeah. hag, like the sea hag, like that was that that character scared the. <laughs> Spooky man, yeah. she was a witch. Yeah, and she yeah, she was scary. And all those characters came from the the newspaper strip, you know, by by E. C. Seeger. Yeah, that those those uh, strips, you know, those newspaper strips were mind blowingly great. Like Mark Twain, you know, funny, you know, and and those those made me crazy. I still love them and, and read them all the time. And and actually, again, back to SpongeBob. But when 
SpongeBob first started to, to uh, pop, uh, first started to do all right, uh, Hillenburg gave me um, like an actual daily strip by Seagar. Oh yeah, like a daily with, oh, wow. where he's punching out a goon. Those are creepy too. Yeah, remember the goons? Yes. Yeah. So so it's like a great like four panels of a fist fight between Popeye and a goon, and it's really Seagar. And I still look at it every day and go, wow, the, the guy that created Popeye like drew this. You can see his eraser marks and stuff. You know, it's it's, it's very tactile, and uh, yeah, it, 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 it's crazy. And do you have do you have a lot of that kind of like memorabilia in the house and things like that? I have some, you know, none of it's uh, not, not too much SpongeBob stuff, you know, because yeah. I just give that I just sign that stuff and give it away. But but uh, Squidward, on the other hand, Roger Bumpus, I think has the biggest collection of SpongeBob abelia in America. Like he's trying to get uh, he's he's trying to get uh, uh, the Guinness Book to uh, sign off on him. Wow. Yeah, the Guinness people. All right, what what in the world would you have done if it wasn't for the whole comedy voiceover, wow, fun loving guy you become? Boy, that's a good question, but it fills me with fear and dread. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't. Did you ever have a plan B? Jiffy car wash. <laughs> that, that was your plan B? Yeah. I love it. You're like, okay, wax on, wax off. Me and Mr. Miyagi. Uh, yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I never had a plan B. So um, same with Bobcat. And really the same with my wife too, you know, there's, we, uh, yeah, we, I know that for me, I took a year off. I'm like, I want to take a bonus year after high school, you know, before I do college, I just want to explore this comedy thing, you know, move to Boston, start it. It's still going on. Yeah. My bonus year is still happening. Right. It's, it's, it's from 1980 till now. And uh, yeah, same with my wife, you know, she, she, uh, she graduated high school in Chicago and joined Second City right away. So, so yeah, we kind of never got around to that, all that stuff that you're supposed to do that path that you're supposed to take or that everybody tells you to take, um, we didn't take. And, uh, you know, luckily, you know, we managed to, uh, to do all right. It worked out okay, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm guessing if it wasn't for cartoons and stand-up, I don't know what I'd be doing. I think it would involve me living in a cardboard box under a bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty sure. All right. <laughs> Overpass. Let's talk about something completely off topic. Okay. I, I thought, get, oh, I what? Sorry. Um, I, I better get going on this freaking thing. What Don't distract me with questions. Childhood TV favorites. Like, were you a, were you a Brady Bunch kid or a Partridge family I kid? I live right down by the Brady Bunch house. But, but yeah, I like the, I like the Brady Bunch okay. You know what I mean? It was a little phony for me. You know, eh, you know I like some of the girls on it. You know, I was, you know but, uh, but, uh, but I didn't love it. I didn't love it. But but yeah, I was like a Star Trek guy. The stuff that was on when you came home from school was Star Trek, you know, those first three seasons. In yeah. fact, the Funko Pops, the, the first Funko Pops that I bought were the TOS uh, uh, Trek ones. Yeah. And then you guys did the Mirror Mirror yeah. ones, right? Like, yeah, wow, Spock with facial hair, mind blown, goatee. Yeah. You know, so Spock with his whole patch, I love it. And then, um, uh, yeah, Scarface, uh, Sulu. There's another one where he gets crazy. Uh, Takei gets, you know, Sulu gets crazy and he's, and he's running around the Enterprise with a, with a he, fencing foil. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And, and I just remember he, yeah, it's not the mirror, mirror one, but he just like jumps into frame and he goes, no escape for you. <laughs> no escape for you. You either leave this bar bloodied or with my blood. On your song. Do you want to talk a little bit about? Uh, so your wife was in the Smashing Pumpkins video tonight. Tonight, how did that come? Yeah, about? we both were. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're the couple. This is a video. What year is that? Like, um, do we have kids yet? Ninety-one. That, that's that's how I. It's like let's see. If we didn't have kids yet, it had to be before nineteen ninety-six. So so. Uh, yeah, you know what that was? That was a. Uh, there was a video for a Smashing Pumpkins song called Tonight Tonight. The directors who also, they're a couple, uh, and they, 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 they directed the, the movie Little Miss Sunshine. And they used to come to tapings of a comedy sketch show that was on HBO called Mr. Show with Bob and David, mm -hmm. which was David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. And then my wife and I were in the cast and some other people. And you know we did some writing on it too. And uh, they used to come to those tapings and they saw my wife and I and they said, we're doing this kind of George Melier you know, Hugo kind of kind of video for this for this song. And you guys have silent 
movie faces. We do? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably wishing I'd be silent right now. But they said, uh, you know, you guys got big eyes, you know, thin faces, thinner than. And uh, yeah, so they put us in it. And it was practically all practical effects like they would have done in, you know, 1908 or, you know, whenever he was doing that stuff. What about, here's a great question for you. Is there any animated character you look, you wish you could have played? Like you were like born to play that character. That was, that was meant oh, for you. Oh, well, you know, it's funny when Hillenburg showed me that SpongeBob pitch we were talking about earlier, SpongeBob was the one thing when he showed it to me, and I always say it like he showed it to me and it was like the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. Oh, you know, I was like, wow, I just loved it so much. Don't look at it, Marion. And it was like uh, intense. And it was one of the few times where I looked at it and I said, if this is a show, if, if I turn on my TV and this is a show and I'm not doing the voice, that will bum me out for the rest of my freaking life. Yeah. And there's, you know, you, you got to try to not get so emotionally invested in stuff because you'll, you'll lose your, you, you lose your mind. So, uh, so SpongeBob is one of those. And then Popeye was one of those. And then um, a handful of years ago, Gendy Tartakovsky, uh, creator of Dexter's Laboratory, he's got a Funko Pop. Gendy was working at Sony. He had done, uh, you know, I don't know, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs in the, you know, the Hotel Transylvania yeah. movies. He had kind of saved those. They were like a big mess. You know, he was the fourth director that got brought on and he delivered them a successful franchise. You're welcome. And they said, is there anything else you want to do? And they own Popeye, Sony owned Popeye. And so he tried to do a Popeye thing and did some test animation. And he said, it's probably not gonna be you when it gets finished, but I know you love Popeye. Him and I had talked about it. Do you wanna be Popeye for this test animation? And uh, Greg Delisle was, uh, was olive oil. Well, you know, stand up and be in a lonely job. Yeah. Look who we got over here. It's come Fluffy! Come on, come on. Hey! Come on out at least. Mr. Knights, come on in! Wow, what are you doing here? <laughs> are you? What's up, Mike? Hey, hey come on in. I know. Hey, God, I hate to be hey. stereotypical. Hey, you're blocking the screen. I'm sneaking come into on. another one. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> wow, here. Do you want a chair? I don't sit down oh, anymore. Oh, they give me a big comfy chair over here. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being extra loud. Is it a fluffy a chair? Mic. It's a fluffy chair. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, just, I just thought That's that. Right. <laughs> Thumbnail. Anyway. I love it. Wow, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Tell them how we got drunk in San Diego. Yeah, uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. You went, I think you just told them how we got drunk in San Diego. Yeah, I was like, wow, this, this is the only time I've had cocktails with a guy who sold out Dodger Stadium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I heard SpongeBob say f. <laughs> 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 you can't, you're going to have to say, okay, right? Okay. All right. All right. Let's. I, I see that got too much. Yeah, let's bring Did up the mood. Did you ever feel like this? Like, I just got too much dumb stuff floating around in my head. But like the stuff that I retain was never the stuff that the nuns want, wish you did. You know what I mean? Anything that was like religion or, uh, or, or geometry or, or science or, yeah, I dumped all those files immediately. But uh, can you still say you're our fathers? And oh, all? are you crazy? Yeah, that, that stuff never goes away. You never got, <laughs> did you get hit on the hand with that? The... You know, I will say, uh, uh, I know there's the cliche of the abusive nuns. Most of the nuns that taught me and Bobcat in East Syracuse, New York, were really nice. You know, they're really nice ladies. But the, yeah, there was a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. You keep your hands folded during mass. I'm, here, I'm gonna tie them together. You're like, oh, my, I just got tied up by a nun. Okay, yeah. You're too hyperactive. I'm tying up your hands. Yeah, you know what? That's what I was told. So I wasn't allowed to have chocolate milk at you know, at lunches, they had the regular milk and the chocolate milk, and they told my mom, he can't sit still, so no chocolate milk, wow. which was a huge... Wow! That was a big... You and know, you're watching all the other kids go, mmm, this chocolate milk sure is good! Yeah, I mean, isn't that crazy? Too bad they you can't have any! You know, they bring <laughs> parents in, they go, he has a problem, we think it's chocolate milk. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> like, who came to that? Like, you know... Was, I don't know if that was a, a medically vetted opinion. You know what I mean? God, yeah. We have some now bad news. Now we're bringing up a lot of Apparently moments. chocolate milk affects the boy in a not good way. Which of all the characters you voiced do you like the most? Boy, you know, I gotta say, I've never had a bad day 
in voiceover because you know what I mean because it, it, it's it's always fun and, and even the worst day you have in voiceover is still uh, the worst day you had in voiceover is still better than the best day you ever had uh, putting pins in the sweaters uh, at Macy's you know so uh, you know so so you know what I'm saying so it's like it's like I'm just thrilled to be somebody's paying me to do that thing I wanted to do since I was six years old which I'd be doing uh, if I wasn't getting paid anyway so uh you know, it's all it's all good. I love all the characters, you know. I mean I mean, you know, SpongeBob's great and you know, Eduardo from Foster from Imaginary Friend. He's really got the old he's really cool. And a heifer and uh, the male. I think the male might be the only person from the Powerpuff Girls that doesn't have a Funko Pop. Uh, the narrator was invisible, so he doesn't get a pop. So once again the day is saved. Wow, sorry, that was I get short of breath. I'm older than Sid Croft. You know, I, I've had to play around a little bit with doing voiceover work, and it is really tough. Like how, like when you're doing a different character to get, you know, you're in there and you're watching it, you know, to try to get yourself up for it. Yeah. Like how do you, do you have a certain prep routine? You know, um, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, it's funny, people didn't even know what a voiceover person was up until recent years. People go, people go, what do you do? They go, oh, I'm a voice actor. And they go, voice actor, what exactly is that? And now the answer is voice actor. I've always wanted to be a voice actor. People tell me I have a great voice. You know, it's like stand-up comedy and voiceover are the two jobs that everybody pretty much thinks they could do, right? So there's not a whole lot of glory in it. You know, nobody goes up to a, you know, what do you do? I'm a brain surgeon. Hey, I always thought I'd be pretty good at that, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh... <laughs> on the characters you played. What's the most endearing uh, quality? Uh, Ice King. <laughs> Ice King's a sicko. Yeah, Ice King's twisted. Yeah, he just but he just wants to be loved. I think he said that in one of his one of the episodes. I only wanted to be loved. I just want to be loved. Yeah, but but he does evolve. He does evolve. He uh, in the in the show he's got an arc where he, you know, he does he does kind of become a better person. And most endearing uh, quality about the mayor of Townsville. Oh, God. well, the mayor of Townsville. Well, uh, you know, the mayor of Townsville, he's just a dope. You know, he doesn't know what's going on around him. He's got Miss Bellum, his, his, uh, his secretary, who, who takes care of everything for him. And he just wants to eat pickles and he can't even open the jar. So, um, yeah, he's just, he's just a happy idiot. And, uh, yeah, so there's probably a little bit of me in, in him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now let's do SpongeBob. Oh, let's see. He's another kind of guy who's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I think one reason that Steve cast me as, well, he told me the reason he cast me as SpongeBob was that we shared some Outlook DNA. And I, you know, I'm like, why'd you think of me for this guy? And he's like, are you kidding? This guy's hyperactive. He works really hard. He's super intense about the stuff he likes. You know, he's, uh, some people are often puzzled by, uh, people around him are often puzzled by his uh, joie de vivre. And, uh, you know, you are SpongeBob. What, what do you mean, why did I cast you as SpongeBob? Who else can I cast? So yeah, so, so we're, we're sort of the same. It's that wide-eyed, you know, Jack Skellington. What's this? What's this? So, you know, so sometimes you just, luck into stuff you know so so i feel like i with voiceover i bumbled into the perfect job for me but i also knew that it would be the perfect job for me from an early age it just took me a million years to to bust through the the, the gate of it you know the the glass the glass ceiling so to speak what let's just talk about creativity for a minute like let's like for me like i always live by this motto about abc always be creating because i notice when i'm not i'm miserable you know, I always yeah. feel like I've got to be working. You're a restless on... uh, sort. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've always got to be working or thinking about something, or I feel like if, like, I, I'm not big on vacations, I'm not big on taking time off, stuff like that, just because I, I don't really enjoy it, because I'm still thinking about other stuff. I'm the same guy, and, and it sometimes drives, <laughs> drives the, you, the people around you crazy. Like yeah. my wife, she's like, she's like, you know, why can't you just relax? It's like, I hate relaxing. You know, relaxing sucks, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm just bad at relaxing, I just, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, I've got a little bit of downtime. I'll start a 12-piece band. You know, my wife is like, oh, no. You know, so, uh, yeah, I don't, we don't derive pleasure from kicking back. I, I like it for a little bit. 
you know, I can be on a beach in Hawaii for a day or two, or maybe even three, and then I'm like, okay, 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 I've done, you know, been there, done that, let's go, you know. Like I, you know, all I ever wanted out of life was to make a living doing something I didn't hate. Yeah. As long as I don't hate what I'm doing, everything else is gravy. You know, whatever that is. You know, as a kid, I would think that. You know, because I, I look around, and nobody really seemed to be enjoying what they were doing. You know what I mean? You know, you know, how's it going? You know, how's it going, Uncle Louie? Uh, you know, it's it's good. I've got 30 more years to retirement. Yeah. <laughs> like a you know, Robinson Crusoe on some trapped on some island somewhere. And I'm like, wow, you're just waiting for years to pass so you can not be working. <laughs> wow, that seems sad to me. Well, I always think we live in our own head anyway. Our perception, you and our perception is completely different of this interview. No I'm living in this head. Yeah. I mean, some right some might think this is a great interview. You know, the fans might think it sucks. But oh, what yeah. I'm saying is, oh, I, they'll definitely think it sucks. I, I always think to myself, like. Since we do that, go ahead and put your blinders on, put your head in the sand, live in your own world, you know, create your own world. Right. You know, rather than, I, I don't want to be in the loop. I want to be out of the loop. Yeah, I spent my whole life getting out of the loop, you know, like, like, like a lot of, how, how many thousands of man hours did we spend getting out of the loop? But there's also, we have that little bit of insecurity, like right, right now I'm going, does this interview suck? Maybe. Maybe. All right, that's going to be keeping we'll me awake out. at night. This is going to be keeping me awake at night. Oh, I just got a thumbs up. Okay. Is it's he on okay. your payroll? Well, yes. Oh, okay. Well, I can't trust him, man. <laughs> Maybe with Fluffy's appearance, it'll go up. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm fun. Yeah, right. People, people are like, that three seconds was awesome. The rest of it, nah, not so good. All right, this will save it. Ready? Yeah. Rapid fire fun. Oh, rapid fire fun. Oh, no. Favorite movie of all time. Oh, favorite movie of all time. King Kong, 1933. Favorite cartoon growing up. Favorite cartoon growing up. Pop, pop, by the sailor, man. Favorite song of all time. Favorite song of all time. Wow, I got about a million of those. I would say Rolling and Tumbling by Muddy Waters. Rolling and tumbling, the whole night long. First car. First car. Oh, God. I never had a car. Uh, I didn't buy a car until I was 30. I couldn't afford one. So my first car was, it was a, uh, a Toyota Corolla. Favorite ride at Disneyland. Favorite ride at Disneyland. Well, I'm not good at rides because... Uh, uh, I, I can't even watch other people on the teacups because I throw up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. My kids, Daddy, look at me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. That's but funny. Uh, so, yeah, I like the ones that don't shake me up too much. First music you ever bought with your own money? First music I ever bought with my own money. I believe uh, the first 45 I ever bought was uh, Mel and Tim, Backfield in Motion. Backfield in Motion, baby. Backfield in Motion. Yeah. And the first. Uh, LP I ever bought was, believe it or not, um, I think it was Alice Cooper, it might have been Killer. Hmm. It might have been the Alice Cooper Killer album. Because it, it's got a snake on the front, like a picture of a snake. Yeah. And the nuns, again, Catholic school, all, you know, uh, everything goes back to that. The nuns said, we are gonna, during art class, you can bring in your own records and I'll play them and yeah. we'll draw and things. And I brought in Alice Cooper and the lady, yeah, she freaked out. She's like, I'm not, do your parents know you have this album? That's funny, we have a similar, I brought in the bitches back oh! from, from Elton John. And, oh yeah, and and well that that's right on the, the the writing on the cover. Yeah. Oh, I tried to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. That I you, that you got to put them on and it went off right away. <laughs> if you could master a musical instrument, which one would it be? Oh boy, all of them. I, I wish. Yeah. I, I I would do anything. I'm I'm there's a, I'm really good on triangle. Yeah. yeah, I've mastered that. <laughs> Took me 15 years of left. Like, come and get it. It's like, wow, I rock. Let's talk about you being popped. Okay. Popped? You mean like busted? No, no. Oh, oh I thought like, you meant like cops. Like, look at this guy. Oh, yeah, okay. Wow, great. Oh, yes, I love that one. The ice king vaulted. Vaulted. Yeah, he's great. And I think he comes with Gunter the Penguin, right? There is, or there, there's a Gunter one. There's one that comes with Gunter, who I also do. Wank. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh my eye! Yeah, that's perfect. This one don't come with Gunter. I thought oh, one. This one has a little butterfly net. Yes, yes, he's yes, he's for jellyfishing, jellyfishing purposes. Yeah, he's great. I love it, and that, I like the white on the front because if people have you sign the figure, you can always sign on the beard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Black makes it sharpie nice. on the beard. Perfect. Who else have we got? Let's see. Oh, this is Eduardo from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. He's like, yeah, he's great. He's like a monster, but everybody thinks he's scary, 
but he's not as scary, he's really friendly. But sometimes people see him and they run away. But he's, he's a beautiful person. Oh boy, uh, like I'm Squatch in here, dude. Squatchy is my terrible impression of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. So uh, uh, yeah, I can't believe they, uh, that they let me do that. But uh, yeah, Squatchy is from, is from uh, Rick and Morty and he is a total uh, reprobate. Oh yes, and this is Cat Dog. Uh, I was Dog and Jim Winnie the Pooh Tigger Cummings was Cat. And uh, uh, just was talking to him last weekend, hadn't seen him in a while. And uh, yes, I can honestly say that I'm one of the few people to ever, they're connected at the body, uh, one of the few people to ever share a lower GI with uh, Jim Cummings. <sighs> Wow, I don't even know what that means. Are there more? Wait, but wait, there's more. Oh yeah, there's Heifer. That was my first show and my first series. That was a hoot. Heifer was based on my nephew who was 13 at the time and he was kind of awkward and he always sounded like he was gonna start laughing. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I just did him at the audition and Joe Murray said, hey, I like that guy. Wow. So. Like uh, if yeah, you've you, been you just popped steal from the people two, three, in your four, life. Four, five, six times. You've been popped six times. We had, huh? Oh wait, Spyro the Dragon Seven. from the video games. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I'm still single digits. So I'm a, I'm a piker. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at what you built there. Oh. Where is he? Yeah, oh, right there. Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, you know, just, just, just a, 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 a bearded uh, girl with bangs. And you know, is it too late to change? I'm going to put the skirt back on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> That's the perfect way to wrap up this episode of Pop Talk. You didn't think you'd ever do it, did you? No. You're like, how am I going to get on? There's no off-ramp off of this freeway. There's no exit. So, uh, yeah, cool. Thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mr. And Tom Kenny, for being our guest. There you go, folks. And thanks to Gabriel Iglesias. Thank you, Gabe. No, no, sit down. Sit down, please. No.